Hello there, stylist. And so it's been a while since I've done an informative video and I wanted to do an update to my hostess packet um, video because I'm always trying to find a way to make the process of assembling hostess packets easier. Um, and I love to be able to prepare them in advance as much as possible and then add to them what I need to so that it's not so cumbersome or so involved. So um, it's pretty much almost the same as my previous video with some updates, some minor tweaking that I felt warranted making a video just to make everything streamlined and everything easier for everybody. So I'm a big, big post-it notes girl. I love to put post-it notes on everything. And I'm still trying to find out if there is a way for me to have messages pre-printed, I guess, on post-it notes, which I'm sure you can probably do at 123 Prints or Vista Print or whatever. I'm just still trying to play with that idea because I find myself writing quote unquote directions to all of my hostesses and post noting every piece of material that I send to them. And so I am just trying to think about that a little bit further. But for now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to share with you the updates and hope that it is helpful to you and that you gain some extra tips. So real quickly, I'm actually packing for a trunk show that I have this evening. So I'm really excited. And obviously for my hostess packet, I already sent that out to her, but I'm putting more hostess packets together um, for hostesses, potential hostesses. And I'm still thinking if I wanna give them their hostess packets, if they choose to hold a show right away, because there's other specific things that I do that would be easier if I had the hostess packet and did everything all at once and then sent it to them. But technically, when you think about mailing them, they can be five or six dollars at a pop. And maybe I can just mail them labels and instruct them what to do with those labels when they receive them to add to their hostess packet. So I'm still playing with that idea too, and you'll see why. But so for my hostess packets, of course, I use the Stellan Dot uh, folders. And I mail all of my hostess packets flat rate priority mail because it gets to them in less than three days. I mailed out one yesterday and she got it today. So um, she was in Reading and I'm in Philly. So that's like an hour and a half away. So I'm so like surprised that she got it already. Um, and I mail them in the flat rate envelopes. Now there's two envelopes. There's one where, actually let me grab it, hold on. Sorry about that. So when you do a flight priority, there's this flat rate envelope that's kind of like a thinner, almost like um, cardboard but not like envelope. And then there's this nine by, I think this is nine by 15 or 10 by 15. It's a bigger one. And it's like that, I think it's called Tyvek paper. You know, where it's like that thicker paper. So you can do this. This, if you print out your mailing label at home and put it on, it's only $5.05. But if you take, if you get this and you do it at the post office and have them do everything, it is like $5.60. So you save, you know, 55 cents printing them off at home, so why not? So I print them home, especially because you don't have to weigh it. It's just, anything ships, it, it fits, it ships. So this, I typically put this, everything in this, but the problem is, is the Stellan Dot folder does not fit in this. So there are hostess packets that I have done where I only put the contents and not the folder, and it fits fine, and that's great. But if you do, for presentation purposes, just feel like you really want to send them the folder, 
you're going to need to do it in this bigger envelope. And I think this one is actually 615. I don't use it all the time, so I'm not sure, but it's roughly around there. So either way, it's great because as long as it fits, it ships, and I'm all about that. So when I do hostess packets, I don't leave anything left out. Like, I just put everything in there. So these are the envelopes. Um, so going back to the actual hostess packet, so here's the folder. And what I include in my hostess packet are three full-size lookbooks, three capsule lookbooks if we're at the time of a capsule collection. Um, I'll do three capsule collection lookbooks. One size opportunity brochure. And of course we have the new ones now, but this. And then for um, stylist opportunity literature, I do this, which it's been floating around Facebook. It's fantastic. Um, just really lets them know the different ways that they can be a stylist, that it's not so crazy full-time like some of us, and it's totally flexible. And then, of course, the let's chat for now. And then sometimes I include other things, but it just depends. But these are definitely the bare bones of my hostess packet. So I put the two sheets for the stylist opportunity and also the little brochure to the left in the folder. And on the right side, I put the three hostess packets and I include 10 to 20 paper invites based on what the hostess would like printed out for her with the envelopes. I don't stuff them, I just put them together. And then I also include six minis and there's six because my labels that I have on a sheet or six to a sheet. So I print them off and then I put them on the back. I have post-it note on everything because I'm going to explain to her what she's going to use these for. Um, it makes it easier. I also have 10 of my business cards because I will also affix the shop this label, uh, shop this link label on the back of these and she can just hand these out to whoever she wants to as an added bonus to having exposure, you know, like letting people know what her shopping link is. So in the hostess lookbook, like you see I have a post-it note up here because I'm gonna write on here, keep this, this is your copy for the hostess. And then I'm also gonna include my little note to the hostess on a sticky note. I used to actually include actual Stellan Dot cards or whatever, but now I send that as a thank you card instead of putting it in here. Because I just need to be like, hey, thanks for hosting. Look at your goodies, I'll give you a call so we can discuss, da da da, like whatever, really easy. And I have these two post-it notes already on top of here, ready to go, so that I can just send this out. And then my other two lookbooks, I have post-it note, but this is gonna say, keep this at work, or leave at work for others to order from. And then the other one will say, pass this out, rotate it out, circulate it among family and friends. So then they know what they're doing with their you know, lookbooks. And if you have the three capsule lookbooks, same thing. I just put them inside the existing bigger lookbook so that way everything goes together, okay? Now, what I started doing that's a little bit different, anyone that's watched my previous video, I do a shop this link label, a full sheet of 30, and that what I put on there is the name of the hostess event, like if it's cocktails and couture, Java and Jewels, whatever. I put the date of the show. I used to put the address, I no longer put the address because if they click on the link, the address is gonna show on the link, right? So then that way she can leave the magazine everywhere and she doesn't have to worry that random people see her address unless they actually went to the site. And I changed that up, I was like, hmm, let me think about that. Additionally, on that same label, I will say shop this link, and I put the link until, and I put two days before the end of the, the show. So like it's open for three weeks post show. So let's say it's gonna end November 10. I will put the date as November 8. So I have that two day window to just like get everything together and make sure I get everything in. And so I will say shop this link until November 10 or November 8th, just so that they know that they can continue to shop that link and that the show's open. And then, you know, I put her name and, and I put those labels, I fix one label 
on everything. I put it on every lookbook, every capsule book, every mini, every, you know, whatever. I just put it on everything. The little cards I told you that I include, I put them on the back. And then that way, you know, she's like, oh, if you can't make the show, that's okay. Shop my link. And she just gives them the card. Easy, done. Somebody has, has the link somewhere. It's floating. So I do that. And so what I did to streamline the process, because literally when I started doing hostess packets, my room, my office area looks like a bomb went off and I have everything out. I'm putting everything together and it's just driving me crazy. So I've now decided that I'm just going to pre-do the bare bones of my hostess packet, which is like this stuff. And then when trunk show exclusives come out, based on what month it is, I'll then print those off and then just add them to the hostess packet so it makes it easier. I used to actually print off a lot of those and put them in and then if I didn't get to them, I one, wasted paper and two, had to go back in and pull them out and add a new one. So now I'm like, that's only month by month. So I'm gonna do the bare minimum and then I'm gonna add, you know, time sensitive materials on an ad needed basis. Makes sense, right? So in terms of the labels, what I've done now too, because sometimes for whatever reason, I don't know where my labels are. And that's me being a little disorganized. So now in every hostess packet, I put the label with the six on for my minis right into my hostess packet. And I put the sheet of 30 right into my hostess packet. So when I go to do and set up everything for that hostess for that event or show, I have everything already in here. I just have to pull it out, type up her information on the computer and print them out and then I have it ready to go. It's all in my hostess packet. So I feel like, wow, that's gonna help out a lot. And then every hostess packet, I'm now going to include the necklace fit guide because people always kind of wonder how long the necklace is. And so I think this is a nice visual for people to kind of get an idea because when you try to explain it sometimes, it's hard to. So I think this is a nice visual. The style rewards I have here. Of course, the social mixology sheet, and I've done that one in color. The wish list. Um, our girls collection, because I feel like they don't get enough, enough marketing. So I wanna include the little sheet so people know that we do carry a little girls collection. Currently, we have the Hostess Exclusive Boutique. Um, so I've included this sheet. Because these are like Hostess packs I'm putting together for right now, for this month. Uh, Stella and Dots Shop for a Cause for our October Boutique, Breast Cancer Awareness Boutique. And then I have this fun image um, of just like the wallets and scarves. I just think it's cute. And it kind of adds another layer of accessories visual um, other than jewelry. Okay, so in terms of the other two lookbooks that I include, because this is the hostess's own copy of the lookbook, I do include all of this stuff. I include this and all of these in all the other lookbooks, just not the hostess rewards and stuff because they're not hosting, they're just part of the show. So I'll keep that separate. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So that's in the hostess packets, the main copy. What I've also done is I always give the incentive for every hostess to try to get three outside orders to get a pair of studs, a friendship bracelet, or a poof. So in both of those other two lookbooks, I include three order forms each. So there's a total of six. And I tell her, if you can get three outside orders by the date of your show, you'll get a choice of one of those three items. If you can get six, you'll get two. So it kind of pushes her to want to do it. Um, and I try to make the order form as simple as possible. And I always recommend online ordering. So, but I try to make it easy because if people want paper, they want paper, right? So one thing that I've done is I've created a sample order form to explain how to fill it out, to make sure there's no missing information, and to let them know they can contact me if they get stuck. And 
to let them know who to make checks payable to if they pay by check. Um, if they're paying with cash, it needs to be exact change because I can't make change, obviously I'm not there. Um, and that I would prefer that they would do online orders. Just makes everything easier. Um, but I have everything explained here and I can actually include a link um, to this so that you can see and you can choose to just print it off and use it, um, which I don't think you'd want to because my name is up here. Um, or you can recreate the exact same um, idea using mine as a template, okay? So I just find that this makes it a lot easier because I always get phone calls or texts from random hostesses. What else do they need to put in the order form? Or how do you fill this out? And I used to highlight everything with a highlighter, but I was just kind of like, you know what? Now I'm going to do it differently. Um, I made a scanned copy of this in the PDF. And so every time I have a show, I print this off. And I include this in the lookbooks with the other blank order forms to aid in getting orders done. I want to make it easy for my hostess. I don't want them to have to think about it. And again, obviously ordering online is the best idea. So this is the sample order form that I include. And then, like I said, I include six order forms, three per each lookbook that I include in her hostess packet. And the sample, I, I literally make a photocopy of our company's, you know, carbon copy order form. And I always just have my name already and my status ID and my email at the top. I will end up putting a shop this link label right here where the hostess information is on all the order forms. So it's already there. Um, so it just again reminds them what the link is if they just want to do an online order instead. And there's no second guessing on what to put there or how to put it, the information. And then if you can see, I kind of asterisk sections that definitely need to be filled out because for whatever reason some people just leave things blank i don't know why so you know asterisk for their name and their their information their itemized list of the things that they're purchasing um you know their totals have to be designated the tax and the shipping which i already pre-filled the shipping there and then how they pay and that they have to sign and so on the sample order form, I explain it pretty thoroughly how to do it. Um, like I even talk about trunk show exclusives here that don't forget to include that if they are buying something. And obviously once I give these hostess packets out, the trunk show exclusive will be in there too, so they'll see that. I explain that they have to add the shipping before they tax the item. Um, that seems to be a recurring thread over here. I don't know if that's universally in every state, but I know most of the states that I've dealt with, California, Florida, New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Texas, so far I've had that. So I think it might be universal, but I'm not sure. And then I just remind them that to sign because technically speaking, the transaction can't happen unless they sign. So this just makes it easier so that there's less second guessing and this is in every lookbook. Well, the two out of the three lookbooks it's in. So I put those two together and I have post-it notes again, like I told you to designate what you do with them. I put them all together into the folder. And then I put the minis. And then also I've been hearing, you know, other stylists recommending like doing red stamp and actually printing them out as like four by six cards for invites, which I think is an awesome idea. So I definitely might consider doing that going forward because um, sometimes the stalin.stationery is um, unavailable, it's out of stock, and so I look for other creative ways to do invites that I can print, and that would be a great way. So as you can see, everything folds up really nice, and then you can just put it into this folder, it fits, you see? And what I also do too is I use washi tape. I don't know if you know what washi tape is, but it's kind of like a masking tape that comes in really cool prints and colors, and it's repositionable. So it doesn't like ruin, you know, or mark whatever you use it on. And so I'll washi tape this whole thing so that it doesn't open and it doesn't slide around. And then I'll put it in to my envelope. So um, I will try to include the link for the order forms that I give out, for the sample order forms on how to order, the shop this link label, the mini lookbook labels, um, 
I think those four. I will try to include that into a Facebook post so that you can have access to those um, documents and templates. But I hope this helped a little bit. Um, I always get long-winded, so I apologize, ladies. Um, but hopefully that information is helpful and that you'll find that it'll make your hostess packet uh, assembly much easier and more streamlined. So until then, wish me luck at my trunk show tonight. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.